we can fix this. This X40 has fallen into disarray and I promise you this is not a simple RAM upgrade video. You will see very shortly at how chaotic this really starts to get. This involves 3D printing, adapters on adapters, and many other things. The reason I really love the X40 is one, it's a very classic ThinkPad. It has a nice keyboard, but also it has a much better aspect ratio than the Toxic 16x9. Whoever's idea it was to base a laptop screen around a movie is insane, but anyways, I digress. I lost some of the initial footage, but years ago I cut the cable to make a different project because it had the barrel connector I needed. I don't know why I did that. I thought I just may never use this laptop. So I have to rebuild an entire barrel plug from scratch basically. I have this random one, but basically I need to go and hook the wires up internally so that way we get our polarity correct. You are going to see some disgusting soldering in here, but I'm not an expert at soldering. I'm just trying to make this work. I did try and bore out the original rubber casing hoping it would fit and fit like hold all the terrible soldering I did but it ended up not working but luckily we have 3d printers in this household so I was able to print a different casing that I can sort of force this thing through and then inject a lot of hot glue into the back end just to keep it from like touching or causing any sort of shorts now this is the only typical thing with this whole build and that is upgrading the RAM we do add one gigabyte to this thing however that is hilarious to me thinking that that's the max I can add it does have 512 megabytes internally so that'll give us 1.5 gigs total I do want to replace the old IDE drive. The only issue we have with that is there is no SATA that can fit this uh, different form factor. So we have to use an adapter that will adapt an M SATA drive to this. And we're going to get a good 160 gigabytes and it should speed it up a little bit. So I took some measurements of this thing just to see like how it compares. Because again, I need everything to fit nicely. I don't want rattling. I don't want loose things because that's just going to fall apart over time. But I was able to model up some parts print a few different ones just because I had a few minor mistakes and eventually I ended up with this piece here. I did have to do a little bit of modification post print like drill out some holes and this way it allowed that like outer bracket to screw on nicely so everything seals up well and I'm able to pull this thing out once it's in. I also decided to melt a little bit of like plastic to make somewhat of a tab if that makes any sense to keep the whole PCB secured in there really nicely. It was kind of hard for me to design something that it would fit perfectly so this is the best I could do. Then I finished the assembly by adding the little metal thing. It's actually quite important to add this part just because it allows it to slide in the little rail system that's inside the computer and that'll help line everything up vertically really well. I do have these files available and I will link them in the description in case you try and do this yourself. The initial fit was slightly tight just because I think it was a little too wide for the laptop but nothing a few wax can't solve. I was able to pull it out later and then push it back in with more ease but that first time took a few wax so uh, I guess if you do print this uh, it's at your own risk. Now it's time to get the actual battery in, boot this thing up and see if all these parts actually worked. It was a little sluggish at first but once I got into the actual BIOS I could see that the RAM is recognized. Now we can go ahead and try and install Linux on this thing because I think that's probably the best bet at this point. I'm not going to try and track down some uh, XP ISO so we're just going to go with Debian 12. Mostly because Debian 13 is not supported on the 32-bit architecture unless you like compile it yourself and I just don't have the time for that so again Debian 12 it is. It managed to install, but it is crazy how slow everything is. That single core processor really holds things back. We really do have it good with these multi-core processors. It's just insane how much faster our computers are with the modern day applications. I did not install a desktop environment. Usually even on my main laptop that has like 32 gigs of RAM, uh, eight core processor, I still don't use that. I just use i3. So I, I prefer that honestly. So that'll be nicer for this laptop because we're not gonna eat up the very limited RAM it has. At this point, I thought I had a nice working laptop and I wouldn't have to make any more changes, so I set it all up with nice lighting, had B-Top running, ready for some cool B-roll for the end of the video, but on my next startup, this happened. This date time error is because the BIOS is resetting and that means the CMOS battery is dead. So I had to try and track down the battery that would actually fit this laptop and it was not easy. There are a lot of options out there and it's hard to find something cheap. Because again, I don't want to spend a fortune on a laptop that really isn't going to be extremely useful going forward. I finally found one but it took about 3 weeks to get here and that brings us to this point where we are going to try and install this thing. I'm actually kind of glad the CMOS battery died because now we can open up this laptop on the front or I guess the top, I don't know what side you would call this, but it's the keyboard side. We do have to remove quite a few screws. I uh, forgot there was two other ones and I tried to rip the keyboard off and I realized it wasn't budging and that's when I found out that there was two additional screws I missed. However, once you get that off, you can lift the keyboard and detach the ribbon cable. 
do make sure you're really careful at this point because if you tear that ribbon cable good luck finding a replacement once you've got that you can sort of pry up the CMOS battery it does have sticky tape on the back side it is really stuck so just be careful as you crank on it don't go too ham too crazy or you end up damaging something once that's done though, I was thankful that the battery company that sent me the CMOS battery already had a sticky pad on there. It made for a really easy installation and it held it nice and secure. Now at this point, I thought this was going to be a home run and everything was going to be fine and I had a perfectly working laptop, but this is when all my troubles really started to begin and I wasted probably three to four hours trying to figure this out. Initially, I couldn't get past the splash screen and I wasn't sure if it was the CMOS battery causing this, but I thought that'd be kind of weird. However, I did hear some beeping and usually computers, especially the old ones, would give some sort of like beeping combination and you could use that to troubleshoot what kind of error codes were being thrown. I tried looking it up online to no avail, but then I used ChatGTP and just described the beep and it worked. I saw exactly what matched and it was the keyboard. So I had to take it off again, make sure that cable was on there really nice and tight and seal it back up again. At this point, I was still having more and more problems. Nothing was making sense. I was trying to boot in a different uh, menus, the BIOS, the boot order, just trying to get to the Linux install. Sometimes I'd be successful, sometimes I wouldn't. It wasn't making any sense. I was kind of afraid that the CMOS battery was like the wrong voltage and was just causing problems. So I plugged in the old one, tried again, but still had the same issues. At that point, I finally just flipped it over and took a look at the internal components again, just to make sure everything was fine. I didn't like wreck something trying to like rip that keyboard off earlier. And that's when I noticed the RAM was looking kind of weird and I tried to remove it and I was like, wow, this is not in the right position at all. It was up against other PCBs. And that's when I realized it was like out. It somehow like popped out. So I pried it back out, inserted it back in again booted it up and we actually got to the Linux screen. However, my Linux got corrupted somehow, so we had to reinstall. After the installation, I did reboot it. Everything worked fabulously. I did get i3 installed and here we are with a working laptop. I'm actually happy and pleased to say it is finally done and finished, but wow, was it a journey. There was someone who commented on one of the previous videos and they asked, will it run Doom? And I think you can see for yourself, it certainly can run Doom, so. It was quite the challenge, quite the journey, but at the end of the day, we do have a working laptop, and it's always fun to bring these ancient laptops back into the future.